year. Maybe On that very same building and just down the hall, there exists a completely different world as far as radio stations go. WMMS, one of Cleveland's progressive rock stations. Boone started at the quarter of Ninth and Euclid downtown, and he says to me, This is Cleveland. back well we were finally back the last time (laughs) well it's been a minute welcome to stairway to cleveland that's keith that's scott don't get that's not keith no it it was at one time but not anymore we're very pleased a very special guest down here honored you may know him by many names yeah let's run through them let's run through them go for it michael hutter yeah but you kind of know that one it's my, it's my government name. Right. <laughs> Mike nice. Hunter. That's not my name at all. Derek Bateman. That was once a former alias I've had. Amazing hair that guy had. Real dickhead. Agent D. <laughs> Agent D. Real Someone dickhead. was on my fake Wikipedia. Agent, <laughs> Agent D was briefly somebody that was a secretary, or, yeah, a secretary of defense for a guy doing the president of pro wrestling gimmick. Okay. Never oh. saw the light of day. This one we might remember. Ethan Carter the third. That is kind of the derivative of who I am now. And now the Overman. The Overman. Because he's Overman, simply known as the NWA World Champion. Ah, look at EC3, that. ladies and gentlemen, he's here. Woo! EC3. I hear you clapping. They're, oh, wait. <laughs> they're going nuts. <laughs> they're shitting their pants. They're way to Cleveland. Here That's we are. Funny. Oh, Thank you very Thanks much for being, for being, here, being here. here. Well, you guys did kidnap me in a windowless yeah. van. It's it took both of us. Threw a bag over my head. <laughs> yeah, he ethered me until I passed out. <laughs> Hey, you didn't even taste those roofies in that beer, did you? <laughs> he doesn't drink beer. <laughs> well, we're here to talk about a lot of cool things, wrestling majorly, because that's kind of what you're known for. I like music better. We'll talk about music all well, day. We could do that all day. Yeah, well, yeah. We're actually musicians. Uh, but we do want to talk about your big show coming up on was Please. October 28th. 28th. Sal Win. NWA presents Sal Win, a pay-per-view extravaganza. Halloween theme. It'll be live in Cleveland, Ohio at the Masonic Temple, and that's over on Euclid. Yeah. yeah, it's a big match. I have a championship title match in my hometown, so it's pretty cool. Going against Tom Latimer. Tom Latimer, yes. What do we think of that guy? <clears throat> I have a deep fondness and respect for him and his ability. Yeah. I will not lie to you. He's one of the more handsome men in wrestling. He's a good looking dude. He is really good looking. He's uh, like, yeah, he's like 6'3", British, like well put together. Uh-huh. Um, but he's going down, isn't well, he? Well, he has to go down. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I spent a year... To be fair, about... Three days ago at our XO Pro show, which is now our Cleveland affiliate of the National Wrestling Alliance, that I'm running, he uh, beat me up with a chair in front of a bunch of kids who were very upset. And <laughs> yeah, that's not a good thing to do. <laughs> that sounds like my prom night. Yeah. And it was, <laughs> you know, despite all the pain, I, I kind of deserve it because I spent a year terrorizing him. Uh, too, uh, well, so. see. But you know. Doesn't he have a wife involved in this he situation? He does, yes. Uh, That's a classic wife. case of fuck around and find out. It's a classic <laughs> case of fuck around and find out. Yes, his wife Camille will be in his corner. She's a tall Helling. glass of water herself. She is a tall glass How of water. Tall? And she's, you know, she's the feminine persuasion, so obviously nuts, right? <laughs> of course. Well, yeah. Yeah. she's got her issues, I'm sure. <laughs> They're all sisters. Yeah. Well, we're going to talk about all this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and, and listen, I have a list of all your accomplishments, but I know you don't like talking about the past so much because you like living in the future and yeah, the now. But I mean... Because you like to control your narrative. I do like to control my narrative. But then you look at it from a musician's perspective, right? Oh, yeah. Hypothetically, if I'm Kiss, who you Woo! guys hey, quite an affinity <laughs> for, I mean, people want to hear rock and roll all night. They want to hear Detroit, the Rock hits. City. They want to hear they do. Love Gun, which right. is my favorite. All right. Maybe they even want to hear Beth. So we can do I some past. We can do some past. <laughs> all right. Well, you've had quite the career. I mean, yeah, I guess. you started, I mean, 2002. Yeah, I was out of high school and started this journey. And where'd you go to high school? Willoughby South High. Look at that. 
I'm a North guy. Oh, I <laughs> figures. Yeah, I mean, but listen, like, I'm neither, so I liked you both. It's you know, it's like it's I a know. brotherly little battle. No. But South I mean, kicked our ass every year. Yeah, it doesn't. Well, that's matter. why you didn't like them. No, I mean, you may uh, you know be one of the most famous alumni from I, South. Next I to this guy, uh, what's his name again? Cream Hunt. Oh yeah, Cream that Hunt. guy. Yeah. Yeah, my son played football against him. Oh, yes. It was quite the extravaganza. I don't know if Kareem was actually from Willoughby or it was just claimed to be, but you know what? Yeah. I'll I'll, I'll take his accolades. Okay. I think on the list of Willoughby South graduates, Kareem probably usurped me, but I was somewhere between the guy who wrote Cheers and an astronaut. So. Hey, that's a good place to be. Not bad. bad. It's out of this world. Yeah. (laughs) Cheers. (laughs) Why was it? You guys are fucking funny. I we don't mean to be. We're just didn't idiots. the guy who wrote Cheers own Kleinfeld's restaurant downtown Willoughby? I, don't, I think no, that, 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 that makes sense. If we had a fax checker, we'd... Yeah, we don't. If we, we had don't the internet, that. we'd maybe... Know nah. That. It's overrated. It's, it's a fad. Yeah. There was... I don't This is totally off subject, but, you know, how Kleinfeld's had the good coffee always. Yeah, yeah, is yeah, that yeah. still there? Yeah. Um, okay, good. Because, I mean, I just drove by it, so I said no. <laughs> when it becomes... You don't even look anymore yeah. if you... But didn't somebody film that for a pilot? Of like they a, did. I think it might have been him. I would think so, yeah. Yeah, hmm. yeah downtown Willoughby's a beautiful place now, man. It's yeah, it's a, not bad. It's shout out of... Sage. Shout out uh, Kava the Soul. Oh, yeah. They're good friends of mine. Shout out, you know, what do we got over there? We got Wild Goose. We, we got, got Wild Goose oh, and Nora's. And how could we not forget Pranzo? Pranzo? Pranzo. I've never been to Chef Pranzo. Oh, dude, our friend Chef Yak works there. and dude, Chef Cock? No, Cock. Yuck. That's a different restaurant. <laughs> yeah. You, don't, you go there after hours. <laughs> I-A-C. Yuck. It's a buy one, get one free. Well, I will, I will yeah. check that out. Because you're a Willoughby guy. Frank Yakabuchi, yeah. one of the best chefs, has made my favorite meal of all time. The veal. Try the veal. Try the veal. Try the veal. It's beer all standing. week. <laughs> but anyway, so you started in 2002. Now, did you? Where did you train? I mean, did you start training right out of high school then, or? Yeah. So there was a. Uh, you know where the Captain Stadium is? Of course. Yeah, yeah, across the street there was this like dumpy, shitty, crappy. That's desolate, still there. Whatever yeah, it is. yeah, building with like a bunch of like units in it. So some Weisenheimer got the idea he was going to start a wrestling school. Uh, his name was Eddie Edwards. Oh. He still owes me twenty dollars, but that's another Edward story. Eddie Edwards. <laughs> yeah. Hey, like, Palace man. Yeah. yeah. Nah. It was about eighteen by eighteen feet, and the ring is about sixteen by sixteen feet. So it was just like this wow. ring, in this little little thing. And then uh, J Rock, the Big Daddy Destruction, was our trainer, and so we mm-hmm. trained in that. We trained our asses off, and we had I had a very good upbringing for the level considering, because on the small time level, it could be very easy to fall into cons and traps and people just oh, taking yeah. your money. But J-Rock was fairly good. And he was a young guy at the time, too. Not anymore. No, he was a young oh, guy at the time <laughs> and, like, learning how to train and coach. So it was cool. We were a good crop. A lot of the people I went to high school with, we all just trained together. So Really? Yeah. Hmm. It was a bonding experience, you know? Yeah. Yeah, that's good. So you trained there for about a year. Mm-hmm. And then you appeared on WWE Heat. In 2003? Was it? Oh, I don't know. That's what it says. That early. That's what it says. Right here. It can't be wrong. It's on the internet. If it's Wikipedia, it's all wrong. And I've actually tried to update my own Wikipedia, and they wouldn't allow me. Well, what do you know? And I'm like, this is literally me, and you spelt my name wrong. Oh, no. At least you spell EC3 wrong. No, Hunter. Well, (laughs) listen, all I'm telling you is, go ahead, Scott. No, please. I think with Heat, that was probably 2006. So we might have trained in that building for a year or two. But, like, I guess my, my first taste of WWE was around then. Okay. So Heat was a show where they put a, you know, a couple local guys in the ring with, you know, the superstars. Sure. And they just get their fucking asses whipped. Job. So, yeah. yeah. Well, the job in wrestling means get your asses kicked and lose. So, yes. <laughs> yes. The so job, the job squad, in music means. You know. A good friend. <laughs> Al Snow was a member of the job squad. I'm a big Al Snow fan. I love Al. We'll talk about wrestlers, yeah. but... I mean, I have a whole new appreciation for that man now. Are you watching wrestlers? I love it. Good. I love it. They're selling out. You know, I go down there. I know. Now. I've yeah. I've heard you're down there now. Yeah. Um, so like, I went down there mostly because I'm going to segue one day into coaching myself, and he's awesome. the best coach. So how better can I learn than by sitting under his le- learning tree? But I'm still a top guy, and I'm still highly That's valued, right. and I'm still world heavyweight champion. I'm still in my prime. So still top one percent. That's right. That's right. 
Congrats. But yeah, thank you. Yeah, he's a champ. Thanks for kicking some ass. Hey, you know. <laughs> so you went down to Ohio Valley Wrestling originally around yeah, 2006, probably. 2006, 2007. Yeah, I did that heat match, right? So surely I got my ass kicked, but I knew. When Who I did won. you lose to? Was it a big Charlie match? Haas and Viscera? Okay, so it was a tag team match. Yeah, so Charlie Haas is you know got big the strapping amateur wrestler, and yeah. then uh, Viscera sure. was a five hundred pound. <laughs> gigantic big man in a pleather pleather outfit is this when he had the, the yeah contacts and all that jazz yeah, yeah. he was he a large right, large fella sat right on me oh but i knew walking down that aisle man that like i don't know same thing with music once you get that feeling i need to chase this forever yeah right yeah right. yeah so ohio valley wrestling you went down to for a while then you went to florida championship wrestling right so i went down to ohio valley wrestling at the time it was the Developmental system for the WWE, which mm-hmm. was like the minor leagues, but they allowed people to train in their school who were not signed. So I went down there to continue my training and get noticed and uh, did fairly well, but I blew out my knee. Oh, Who's my knee? Exactly. Blew my, my knee out. Whatever. Yeah. Um, the worst. Yeah. So I had to come back home here and get surgery and sling hash at the Cheesecake Factory till the opportunity came. The one in Beachwood? Yeah. Nice. Did you, get a lot of Did you see Baker Mayfield in the parking lot? <laughs> Depends on the table. <laughs> Dare I say. Well, good thing you're a strapping young lad to carry that menu around at GK yeah. Factory. You know, they offer 500 different items. They're all. They're so healthy there. Dude. The calorie count is <laughs> I know. high. On it. Even their salad Linda's had like 2,500 calories. cake covers. itself was 1,500 calories at the time. And I'm like, this is a person's entire day. How, how do you stay. In shape, I don't eat the shit mostly. (laughs) When did you decide to become like jacked and jacked and and shredded and incredibly tan and a physical specimen and an aesthetic (laughs) demigod? Well, uh, yeah, that's what I mean. I said a shorthand, but yeah, (laughs) yeah. Well, when I wanted to professional wrestle, I thought that was it's not a necessary, but it's something I really wanted. I wanted to be the best at what I do, so that was one thing I wanted to be the best at. And then it's just, it, I'm sorry, it becomes a sickness and a disease when you, you chase it and it's an addiction. And I love, I, I, I love fucking being more jacked than everybody. Right. And more disciplined. Like, so they're slapping their faces and like, oh, I can't get to the gym. I'm like, I worked out twice today and I have a full-time job and I'm a world champion and I'm doing this. Mm. So you're just making excuses, you fucking loser. Mm. Not so, brag. I, like, I went to Planet I, Fitness last week once. It's, like a, <laughs> it's not a bad place. Free tanning. There's Tootsie multiple, rolls. Yeah. Well, <laughs> in the post-workout window, that sugar's not the worst thing you can have. Right. So it's okay. Yeah. They got the tanning beds and they got the they do. red light therapy. Oh. They, they did. Do. They got red light therapy and they got the hydro beds there. I had a membership for Planet Fitness because I travel so much sometimes. Yeah, yeah. You know, I got to find a gym somewhere. Sure. I can do it right there. Except it wasn't my membership. It was somebody else's. <laughs> I just had the thing on my phone. <laughs> Shout out Planet Fitness. Shout out Planet Fitness. Hey, if you want to be a sponsor, please let us know. Um, yes, yeah, I'll actually pay the $20. <laughs> All right, let's keep moving on to this. Uh, 2010, you were on that fourth, was it fourth season of NXT? 2010? 2010 to 10,013, it says you were in NXT. The competition they, ended like, in 2012. They're, they're kind of like, at NXT started in 2010. I don't think we started ours until okay. 2011. Because you were on, what, season four, which was on, like, on internet the or something? internet. Yeah. The internet. What the fuck's the internet? <laughs> Name that movie. Anybody? Oh, Jane Silent Bob Strike Back. Nice. Please. Okay, good. Close personal friend of Kevin Smith. Good. Just checking. <laughs> I don't think you'd be a close personal friend. I'll, sh- I'll show you. <laughs> but anyway, so, yeah. So, you were down there and on the... And Dan yeah. O'Brien was your... My pro. Your pro. My pro, yeah. <laughs> well, it doesn't get much better than that guy. Yeah, he didn't care. No. Care well, he about was the on show. that before, right? He, the, the company didn't care about the show. Really? Well, no. once you Dude, were on the internet. Did you watch it? No. <laughs> no, they, we just ran a rough shot. They actually didn't care about it, so as we as talent trying to like stand out and be different, when we, we fucked around mm-hmm. with their stupid games. They're trying to... Cause yeah, they, those games were... They Not. love to torture humans. It was a really weird concept. Like, we're going to bring you up. We're going to pay you money. We're going to put you in front of people. And it's on the internet, but it's, there's still worldwide millions of people watching sure. it. Sure. To just not give one Tammany Hall fuck about what's happening on it yeah. was, like, it baffled me because you never know how you can make somebody valuable to your company and make them a star by just simply giving a little bit of a shit. So when they didn't give a shit, we kind of went against the grain and, like, we're, I'm not taking your dumb game seriously, A, because it's a, They're stupid. not real, B, 
like, who cares? And it made it for far more entertaining television. But they got mad that the show became entertaining and fun and people started to like it. So How dare they? That was the wrong nerve, part. I know, right? Sociopaths, all of them. So you left in season four but came back in season five. Now, was season five Oh, my more- God. <sighs> in a sense, like, I didn't come back because I wanted to. First off, I should have won season four. They robbed me of it. And Who won? The finale, Fandango? Fandango won, a.k.a. Johnny Curtis at the yeah. time. But they rigged the, uh, the count, like... Is he a no. Can I say there's a rigged election and YouTube, Get out of won't, here. YouTube won't slam this down right away? Yeah, yeah, never know. Hey. No, but the vote was all goofed up. But, you know, Tyrus, a.k.a. Bros. Clay, will vouch for this. Sure. But, like, whatever. And then I had a knee injury on the show, so I went and had surgery on it and came back to where I was in developmental. It's kind of like, you know, here are the major leagues. I was in AAA rehabbing, right? right? And so they called me up and said, hey, you ready to go back to SmackDown? I'm like, yeah, man. We're going to be right, on right. real TV. This sounds cool. What are we doing? I will find out a TV. I'm like, all right, whatever. And then I get there. And then they threw me back on that show because they realized they have no content to fill it with because they kept getting rid of people. Oh, jeez. Because they didn't know what they were doing. They had no idea. Yeah. It's kind of a dark time in my life. <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, well, you know. got out of it. it worked sure out. out of it, well, let's keep moving. Well, no. <laughs> well yeah, you did get well, out of I it. I mean, the context of these notes is just, well, the, yeah. the, here's the reality behind them. And then, I mean, if Wikipedia would yeah, Wikipedia. Transcribe, the, transcribe this conversation into those notes, then yeah. we wouldn't have to Yeah, I, I mean, I listened to a bunch of interviews as well, but there's none of these dates on there. Yeah. So you went to where you really found your place in TNA. Correct. Yeah, after they fired me, <laughs> I went to uh, yes TNA where I found out I'm the long lost nephew of Dixie Carter. Who yes. knew? Dixie uh, Carter, Keith, you don't know this, but she ran or owned the company. She did. Yes. She's and the owner. Yeah. Yeah. So she's they a Southern him. debutante. She's one of the nicest people I know. I love her to death because she's my aunt, well, and because she's a good person. Yeah. So, but she That's owns awesome. TNA. So. In theory, her young, entitled, handsome nephew was getting a lot of things handed to him very easily. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Sounds like a bad guy, right? <laughs> Only the best it. bad guy ever. That's true. That's where you came up with the one percent. Was that what? The, yeah, the yeah. top one. Top one percent. Yeah. I yeah I, I came up with that based on watching what was that shit going on at the time. Okay. Occupy Wall Street. Oh my. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right on. So I'd always find something relevant within you know yeah, the yeah, culture yeah. and jump on it so well here's the thing when you went to tna though now here's i was i never really watched tna and i, was, I just couldn't get over the ring with the hated I, it how do you, yeah we the, didn't have it oh really when i got in there okay. so when hulk hogan and eric bishop they switched back to a four-sided ring so i, I came that, in yeah. they left before i came in when i came in we had the four-sided ring but gotcha. they eventually brought it back they brought the octagon. I always thought was, it would. it's cool in small doses, but you can't yeah. build a company based on the size, I'm sorry, the dimensions of your ring. Yeah. What takes place in it's what matters. Exactly. Plus, that ring hurts a lot more. Oh, really? Yeah. Just not as much. Two cares. exercise, man. Yeah. Well, yeah. Fucking, the physics, <laughs> the physics don't add <laughs> physics up. Physics alone, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, you did a lot of cool stuff there, though. I remember you guys did a lot of, like, the briefcase things get fired or yeah. get a championship. Mm-hmm. I saw a clip of you had one, I think it was number three case and you're holding it up and everybody's walking by. Fire him, fire him, fire Well, you fire know him. the story behind that. <laughs> no, please tell us. I mean, by that time I signed with the WWE and I was going oh, back. Oh, was that so it? So that was my, I produced that segment actually. Did you? It was a great I segment. Did. Yeah. Anything I do is fucking awesome. <laughs> I'm a, a, I'm fucking a genius. B, I'm super creative. C, I'm constantly innovating. So yeah, it's funny. Everything's like, well. I love this. Segment. D's modest. D, I'm I'm a world heavyweight champion. <laughs> right. E, I'm brash, <laughs> and I never lie ever. But no, yeah. So I produced it. I thought it'd That's be awesome. funny that it was great. Everybody was calling the shot, and I'm like, what are you playing? But that was my last day there. Too. Was it? Okay. So, yeah, I didn't get a briefcase until I got fired. <laughs> cool. Well, you did a lot. I did a yeah. lot of cool stuff there, though. Yeah, I beat Kurt Angle for the I mean, world title. So that's when you returned to NXT, and then they moved you to the main roster. Yeah. There's a lot in between there, but yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. fill us in. I mean, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, we did the five-star matches in NXT. So that was a good run, NXT and EC3. Had a really good time there. Yeah, Triple was- H is a good boss. Shawn Michaels is a hell of a guy to learn from. Terry Taylor, I'm very happy. The I Red Rooster? The Red... 
Dude, he re- made me think a lot about wrestling and really? psychology that I, I implement a lot now. But well, he was so of, great before he put that gimmick on him. He was, he was still great after. It's just like sometimes he's saddled with the shit. And yeah. To his detriment, he would probably even say, like, I just didn't make it work because I did not like it. Where sometimes... Sure. What I'm trying to tell young talent really is like, to get where you want to go, sometimes you have to be something you don't want to be to get there. And that's yeah. a thing a lot of people have an issue I want to be this. Well, right. you can't. I, I don't, I'm not Derek Bateman. I'm EC3. All right? Exactly. Yeah. But I had to be Derek Bateman to say no. Without Derek Bateman, I couldn't become EC3. Sure. Steps. Such is life, right? Right. Well, you know, now, now sometimes you're work- you got to appease the master until you can have your fucking exactly. breakthrough, you know, creative yeah. artiste. Well, when they moved dream. you up to the main roster. That was a nightmare. They, they, they screwed you. Of I course mean, they did. They, they did. made you mute. I'm not the only one, though, so. Yeah, I know. It's just. I'm not the only one. I know everyone in my circle of friends, when we saw EC3 make him to the main roster, yeah. our boy, our hometown guy's That'd there. Cool. He's, and then the first thing they got. Dean Ambrose taking the microphone from you and yeah. giving you shit, and but you got the you got the victory over him. Yeah, well, I mean, who gives a shit? Right? Yeah, I know. It just. It's also, it's <laughs> but then you had uh, what was it? Two concussions in a row, right there. Yeah. Well, I can't. Hmm. Yeah. Hold on, I've had concussions. Like See. <laughs> no, I had uh, one in NXT, and I got called up with it. So like calling me up when I was already injured was kind of weird. Yeah. But then immediately coming in there, yeah. Then I got two more. So. And then Thumbs they the breaks. Then they cut the roster down during COVID, and you were yeah. Right like, when I got back from the concussion. Right when so, you got back, there showed yeah. Yeah, well, I'm not the only person to have suffered during COVID. Oh yeah, yeah. So, well, tell you he, what though, told you he's yeah. I told you he's doing it, man. He's doing it. So they moved on to Ring of Honor. I did, yeah. How'd you like that? I liked it. Yeah, I'd have liked it better if there was you know not a culture war taking place or Mm -hmm. there were fans in the building and not hiding from a disease that wasn't lethal to anybody (laughs) like and kind of i don't know ruining my income and livelihood for a very long time yeah so thanks government appreciate that one (laughs) but ring of honor was cool talent was good i enjoyed it i think if uh, we had full crowds we would have been rocking and rolling killed it now yeah well they've since been bought up by AEW, right yeah yeah well i guess tony kind of saved it because it was kind of Saved it for what? I mean, yeah. Well, <laughs> I mean, when you have indispensable income and no, you know, yeah, there's nothing like if you can make countless mistakes and just keep using your father's money to buy your way out of like the mistakes you make, you'll never really learn how to do things the right way. So, yeah, I guess he saved it, but as long as my friends are gainfully employed, that's all I care about. There you go, there you go. Then it, it started getting interesting for you after that. Yeah. Because you, you decided to control your narrative. I did. I still do to this and day. It, and I love this, what you did. I mean, you made it grungy. You made it yeah. like underground. A little, a little dirty. And it was crazy filthy. that you had this like great idea while you were on the, in WWE of yeah. having this underground fight club type situation. And then I put something out that described it and visualized it and people were in it. Mm-hmm. And then two weeks later, that was on television. Isn't it crazy? It's, I mean, baffling. Baffling that somebody so, came up with that idea. <laughs> and so I never thought of that. I'm like, wow, there's two of us thinking of almost the exact same thing, mm. except mine was cool and hip and had heart, and there's this dog shit and Boy, sucked. That and was, was bad. A, a nightmare, but hey, hey. <laughs> but, whatever. But your version, I mean, you brought out that film, uh, Free of the Narrative. Right. With uh, JC. Yep. He seems like a good dude. I mean, that thing... It was real cool. It's very artistic was, the way you guys filmed it. It certainly that. was. It's trying something different. It's stepping and it was. The it was. It was like the cinematic thing that everybody was doing, but it was yeah. cool because it didn't have, you know, demons. And... I, exactly. Like the cinematic wrestling got so. What did they call I it? I want to say hokey, but it was. It got hokey. Okay. They jumped the shark, is the terminology. Yeah. When they just started, like, oh, now we're on a special. Po-. Like, it was just shooting wrestling in a different way. And like a, with a cinematic lens, I guess. But it's still down to earth. The reality of what we do is physical combat, just in a yeah. different art form. It, it, but it was, I mean, the s- cinematography alone, he, d- he just killed a couple and Just a couple dudes of cameras. Like there was no production. There was no backing. It was a passion project. So yeah, yeah. It's great. It, yeah, it's, it's really cool. Um, and some of the guys on there, I mean, talk about talented dudes. I mean, yeah. But then you got... The guy who was in there with you, Matt Cordona, yeah. I mean, he really, he's really taken the idea of he did, going he, independent and 
he certainly turned it on. We're its very like minded in the fact of we want to do things in a different way. Mm-hmm. So, but he does his as like a big giant freaking nerd. And I'm like, really, he, he, I'm yeah, really he, cool. Sort no, but he's super, <laughs> it's super successful. And he's, you hear that, Matt? Yeah. He, well, I mean, we are probably going to fight over this at some point, well, I would I, imagine. Well, he's the king of independence. Let's see. I'm not an independent. He, I'm the world <laughs> champion of a major. Well, I know he has pictures of him with holding like 15 belts at one time or what some a, shit. What? Now, do they ever take the belt away from you or you get to keep it? All right. You can take it from me over my dead hands. Well, I'm just saying, like, if somebody else... If they beat like, Actually, funny the story... Belt, they so just give him another one. They don't now, take yours, do they? If, I, if I'm ever to lose this, I will not have this anymore. Really? Yes. Yeah, so it's legitimately whom the champion is. That's where has this. Like, I can you earned get, it, you should be able to keep it. I can get a replica made of it that I probably will with it hanging on the wall. The I mean, somebody might beat me someday. It's not the same. You're right. But that's kind of... So, but that's the game you're in. Yeah, that's kind of the lineage of it, though. Like, when Ric Flair was shooting, <laughs> fucking uh, doing the Woo Energy thing here in Giant Eagle. He's coming to Willoughby. He is. I, but I came out and saw him. Oh, hey, in Painesville? Can I, yeah. Can I swing by? I just want to, like... He had this. Oh, now really? I do. Yeah. Well, that's been... Uh, NWA's been around for, what, 75 years? Yeah. It's the oldest True wrestling is. company. So it's yeah. got a lineage. I mean, it geez, certainly Louise. does. It feels mm. so. It's kind of surreal when you think about it. Okay, so let's move on. So control your narrative. You're still doing it today, in a sense. Now the idea of control your narrative kind of got. Uh, you're on to something different and unique. People want to jump in. Then next thing you know, there's people that are like, "I'm an agent. I, I got TV. Blah blah blah." And so I kind of, I took a shot at a bunch of bullshit, gotcha. so to speak. Where the idea was kind of lost, but the idea of it lives because the idea of CYN was always a mindset. It was never supposed to be a wrestling promotion with like a champion and right. as it was. So, you said nice. you had a question. For well, I just started? the belt is really concerning to me. Yeah. I mean, I think it's awesome, but when you win the belt and mm. you get to hang on to it, is it like the Stanley Cup where you get to hold it? Oh yeah. Until you lose it. Yeah. And it's that actual belt that you have to give up. Yeah. Yeah, that's a lot of. Uh, Incentive not to suck. Traveling with it, man. Oh, airports. Every, ETSA every time. Really? Every time. Like, I've started just putting it in the thing. <laughs> We're champion! <laughs> yeah. yeah good Did time. you just say no? You stole the belt? No. Just, <laughs> it holds my pants up. <laughs> Here's a... So I... I <laughs> just see my suspenders. I kind of effed myself the other... I booked a Frontier flight. What an oh, idiot. What yeah, a nightmare. Yeah. But I had to get to Tampa the last minute. No, so it was 12, I get it. 12 bucks. Some people I'd like fl- those. Well, as long as they land. It's a school but... bus in the air. <laughs> <laughs> so I have like my big bag, things. right? It's a big book bag. And it didn't fit in their thing. Mm-hmm. But I like realized that beforehand. I'm like, these these motherfuckers are gonna like try to make me check a bag for ninety bucks because of this title. Mm-hmm. So whoosh, took the title out, put it on, bag can now <laughs> bag can now fit. Whoosh, walked in there, wearing the title. Nice. Yeah. Was... Did people it was like people didn't even notice. Sea. People didn't even know. They're, like, oh. they're just so dead. They're like, look at that guy. He yeah. bought so, that somewhere. They don't even notice. Well, to be fair. They I'll... have no cognition of what's happening in front of them. People are so right. dumb in general. It was just like, hate people. just another thing. Just another guy in a Frontier flight with a big championship title. Well, to be belt. fair, a lot of marks buy the belts and wear them right. everywhere. Right. Well, yeah. they don't wear them because I don't think you're allowed to wear a belt in certain organizations. You have to throw it over your shoulder. No, nah, I like to wear it. Yeah, it's I mean, old school, man. Yeah. You'd wear it. It's old yeah, I mean, you earned it. And it's yeah. not called a belt; it's a championship. Yes, or title. If yeah. you call oh, it, it's a, we call it a title. Yeah, if you call it down a, here, you can call it a belt. Yeah, like, if they want to call it a belt title, was I'm slang, good. and then Vince McMahon hated the term belt, so mm-hmm. he got what's he championship for? I'm, I'm he's going to be there. <laughs> he's having a creepy mustache. <laughs> he, oh my God! Selling his company for <laughs> yeah. Uh, a lot of money. Good for him. Yeah, good yeah. for him. Yeah, good for well, him. Vince, if you want to be on the show, just yeah, give me a call. Give us a call. We'll, <laughs> we'll ask you what you're doing. So let's. <laughs> so right now, let's talk about NWA. You're you're now the champion. You've yeah. been there since 2022. Yeah. And I mean, things are looking great. Yeah. I mean, Billy Corrigan's now part of the deal again. Yeah, Billy Corrigan is the owner, operator, CEO, president of the NWA. We'd love he just to came have to our. Sh- he just came to my show in Cleveland because we announced the. NWA affiliation with uh, what I'm doing with Exodus Pro. So, like, we're a, a regional territory for the NWA, which is That's a pretty great. big deal. That's the first awesome. one. Congratulations. Yeah, it's wild. Man. Yeah, good for you. So, like, yeah, and he was there. First off, I mean, how do you? 
not even a piece of rock star, right? He's rock a, God. He's a, he's a rock star. He, he, and it was it was very easy because he just loves wrestling. So like he, yeah. he hung out, he evaluated some talent. He was involved he was in Impact for a while, wasn't he? Yeah, he kind of got in as a producer and working his way up. And I think he wanted to buy it or at least buy in. Okay. But then there's all sorts of daggers come out and Game of Thrones bullshit. Oh, jeez. Yeah. As Aunt Dixie was selling off. So nah. I don't have the details or I'd share them. but it's, Sure. I it's just like, remember it was just like every day it's like who owns our company now? Exactly. Spin the wheel. Yeah. <laughs> so he's all in on NWA though. Oh, he's all in. That's yeah, awesome. Well, he man. bought the letter, like not the letters. He bought the company. God bless him. A few years ago, and then has been building it and branding it in his way since. Are you a fan of the Smashing Pumpkins? I am. Okay, I'm good. actually quite it's a, a thing fan. To say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would be okay seeing if I wasn't. Yeah. yeah. I think because he's cool enough. He is cool enough. Are they in the Rock Hall? They should be in the Rock Hall. I mean, I hope so. Yeah. Oh, you shit, would think I should. They should not, be. I think I don't think they are, but They're they should not, be. But they should be. I and did a we did a tour with him, so he brought NWA on the road. Really, that's awesome. Yeah. So there would be like the opening act. Forgive me, I forgot them, but like wrestling on the mezzanine. Then opening act, boom. Then wrestling, boom. Then Interpol was the opener, boom. Okay. Then wrestling, boom. Then Smashing Pumpkins. Yeah. That's awesome, dude. The fans loved it too. Oh yeah, oh, bro. wrestling fans are horrible. Real people that go to see a concert were like super appreciative of it. Yeah. They got into it. They're just sitting there on the internet critiquing it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, dude, they were, they just, they like, were they enjoying just the enjoyed. art of it. Yeah. yeah. Like, wow, these dudes are hitting each other. This is cool. Yeah. Wow, these girls are really athletic. How fun is this? Because it is an art, man. It really, it's it's it really is, an art form. Truly. Um, like doing this art form. Yeah. Hey, as Rick Rubin said, anything is art, right? That's anything right. you That's do. Right. Right. Well, great book, too. The Art of Creative. If you get to Rick Rubin. Amazing. Want to hear well, a Rick Rubin a story? Good thing. Sure, absolutely. All right. I got a Rick Rubin story. Okay. So I'm at Billy Corrigan's 50th birthday party. It's in LA. All right. Hanging out. There's a Fraggle Rock Museum. At this bar. I don't know. I had to go check it out, <laughs> right? There's this Fraggle Rock Museum. So I'm over there looking at it. I'm like, uh, he goes, hey, you're, hey, you're EC3, right? I'm like, yeah, how are you? Uh, I'm good, man. He's like, man, you know. What I like about you, this, and he started going off on a bunch of stuff I'm doing in wrestling. I'm like, holy shit, this guy's a real fan. Yeah. And he had this like khaki shorts on, uncuffed shirt. He had the big beard. Yeah. Beard. Beards like a mat, like just, he just it's looks Rick like Rubin. a dude. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But I don't know this. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I'm just talking to him, like, my God, this guy knows a lot about me. He's a really big fan. Seems kind of like articulate, but what? Like, dress kind of just casual, and he goes, all right, man, I got to go. It was nice to meet you. I'm like, all right, cool, man. He leaves, and someone goes up. He goes, hey, you knew who that was? I'm like, yeah, it's Rick. They're like, <laughs> yeah. that's Rick Rubin. And I oh, went, shit. holy shit, it is. Wow. He's produced some of my favorite albums. So yeah. For you. Dude, he rules. He's Those books great. Yeah. But the fact he knew all that stuff about that's my, cool, man. my dumb shit was like wild. <laughs> It's not dumb shit. It's not, but like, when you're, I mean, one of the greatest producers of music of all time, and you have all these assets and entertainment, anybody, you can do anything. If you're watching Impact Wrestling and EC3 playing grab ass with his buddies, like, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of, it's kind of surreal. That's, That's what cool, we do man. here, we play grab ass. But yeah. You tell. <laughs> That's why I'm not sitting so far from you. Hey! <laughs> That's hurtful. That was Scott. It wasn't me. <laughs> now, who were some of your influences growing up wrestling-wise? I mean, who were the guys you said, that's the guy I want to be like? I guess, yeah. When I was young, was Warrior and Hogan. Mm -hmm. Eventually became a Warrior guy. When I got a little older, I liked the bad guy, so I liked Kurt Henning, and I liked Rick Rude. Yeah, get, yeah. Speaking my language here, brother. When we got into the Attitude Era, I mean, bing, bang. Stone Cold, The Rock, Mankind, yeah. Triple H, that whole gamut, and Kurt Angle, you know. Then we got into, like, where I started appreciating the, the work more. Mm. Guys like Kurt Angle and Eddie Guerrero and stuff like that, so. Yeah, well, I mean, those are some of my favorites of all time as well. Yeah. What's funny about it, too, is when you actually understand it and know about it, you look back on some of the guys you liked, you're like, Ugh. Right, right. But then some of the guys you thought sucked were the best. The best workers, yeah. yeah it's got to be the same with music when you can hear things differently. Oh, absolutely. You see things. Absolutely. Like, like, Speaking yeah. of one of my favorites, mm. I heard a story that you told on a podcast about, what was it? Uh, let me quote you. That's how you do TV. That's how you do TV. <laughs> and I believe it was one CM Punk. Yeah. Yeah, one of my favorite guys. Yeah. Controversial. Is he, though? 
I mean, obviously, some people might think so. I love the guy. I controversy think... creates intrigue. Intrigue creates business. So right. It's okay to have a little bit of fucking. I don't know what's up with this guy, but I want to know, or I'm going to pay money to find out. Right. So I love it. I right. just think the, the dude stands up for what he believes in. He's definitely like, yes, that's how I would say it too. Yeah, I couldn't think of a better way than you said. I tried to. I met him once, and he was very nice, but I didn't have to work with him. Yeah. yeah. I was, no issues with them. Yeah. But like it was But there seemed to have been funny. a cross wire there. It it something was, you said that was taken wrong and then you got Yeah, eat. and it just it's just how anything envelops like like a game of telephone. Yeah. Where something trivially and totally out of context and not at all what was said with intent mm-hmm. turns out to be the ultimate grievous sin. And you, you knew know nothing I mean? about it and people were like No idea. Right. Until Thank you one day I was that. told about it. No, this was just Somebody said something. He came back after a match, and you said, "So ah, that's how you do TV." Like, yeah, congratulating uh, yourself for doing a good yeah, job, not shitting on anybody. Not else. even that. Just like admitting the fact that some guy who fucking sucks <laughs> beat the shit out of me, and it was more so like a, a poke at myself for being yeah. such a loser. And then it just s- snowballed into right. an issue yeah. that you know, knew nothing that about. New no idea. But did that's you squash it? I think. Okay. Well, Would you hear the end of the story? No. Oh. You know the pipe bomb promo? Of course. Right. So he's legendary. Does, yeah, we're all there, and then the pipe bomb promo happens, and we don't know what's going on. Is this real? Like, what the? Right. This is crazy. What's going on? He comes storming to the back, and I'm by the monitor, and I'm like, like, whoa, dude. <laughs> yeah. And he just looks at me, and he goes, well, that's how you do TV. Oh, I'm, like, shit. <laughs> I'm like, wow. That comes is a around. Long, long-term play for a really good payoff to a long joke. term st- storytelling right it's there true. yeah well do you think he's coming back wwe i don't know probably yeah, i think so too I he makes money yeah i mean like, i think he got a raw deal in AEW. sometimes you just gotta goozle somebody they need they severely lack leadership yeah. that's all well, I have to do, what did you think of that first press conference when he said that the, the executive President I just like can run a target. I'm old and beat up. I feel like shit. I, thought, <laughs> I mean, I don't want to be gripes against any of those guys. Yeah. I don't work with them, nor do I work for them. Right. But I mean, a guy who he takes his business seriously, like yeah. I do. Right. And so, if you come into something and you don't think people are working hard or taking things seriously, then you might have these kind of lashes. Yeah. So, is there better ways to go about it? I don't know. I don't know what he did behind the scenes, like. Guys, if we're ever going to be competitive, we got to get our shit together. Or people just, or there was other issues. Like I don't know. Yeah, well, but seems... I take it really seriously too. Sure. Like, so I've been hurt, told I'm difficult to work with before, and it's not because I'm an asshole, but it's because I care about what I'm doing. Exactly, and, and yeah. everybody should. I would hope. I mean, and it's all about giving a fuck. And that's the you thing. I mean, to, that's right? it. Yeah. And and it's not shitting on AEW or anything like that, but there seems to be more. It's. A lot of acrobats and shit like that. I mean, it's not old school wrestling. It's, I think the truth is within the numbers that if there's waning interest from the mainstream, like the diehards are going to be there. Mm -hmm. But if you constantly lose attendance and ratings, people want something different out of it. And I'm not saying there's no place for any of that. Sure. There is. There's a place for everything. That's what makes wrestling awesome is the variety show you can get. But if everything is the exact same of something that isn't drawing attention or money or ratings or numbers, then maybe it needs to be evaluated. Yeah. And I, I, and I, I should be a politician. That you, you should. should right? Well, politics have a lot to do with wrestling, that's for sure. And they're not a bad thing, necessarily. Not, no, not at all. Politics are communicating what you want and desire by certain means. Sure. Right? Now, Adam Copeland is signed over there now. Yeah, he did, didn't he? And uh, I worry for him, though. Because there's been a lot of botches over there, and he's got a bad I, neck. A guy like that, first off, a talent should know who and who they're working with. And right. if you're working with a guy like that, one thing, the most important thing about wrestling is protecting your opponent. Yeah. That's rule number one, because we are putting your lives in each other's hands. Sure. So I've been unprotected by many shitty fucks. <laughs> right? My career. How would I get somebody concussions? I'll tell you whose fist it was. But, right. like, when working with somebody of such legacy and stature, you also have to realize that the danger of what move you want to do is completely unnecessary because of the reputation, the brand, and who that person is. Where 
the safer and easier way is always the best way in everything, really. Yeah. So I wouldn't think somebody would be like, well, you know, I'm working edge today. The five-minute match, I need to hit my quadrabrata DDT spike pile driver exactly. bullshit because then I wouldn't even suggest that if it was my move. Yeah. I'll give you a sunset flip. Is that cool? And then let him go, well, why don't you do that thing you do? Yeah. Okay. Because so. yeah, especially, like, the thing that happened with Moxley just a couple weeks ago. I was horrible. Dropped on his head not once, but twice. I I couldn't stomach that. Yeah. Big fan of John. Uh, sure. You know, that was Now, I did see bad. one thing. I saw a picture of you with them fucking bamboo spikes in your head. Yeah. And I know Moxley's big on that. Yeah. How the hell do they do that? They just, like, just pop it in there. I'm not some guy who does dumb, crazy shit yeah, all the Yeah, you're not time. a deathmatch guy, right? No, but like when I was doing the CYN thing, oh, that like it was the first live thing, something in Orlando. It was like this dirty, seedy, hepatitis bar Great. wrestling <laughs> show. Where I'm like, I didn't do it for the, the, I didn't do it for the match or for that. It's because I had my own camera crew there that I knew if I had footage of that, yeah. that I can utilize it forever. It's like, this guy's lost his mind. Yeah. So like one deal yeah. was to go a long way that's the art of it so how often do you i mean do you work out every day oh yeah Twice i mean you're in shape. great shape yeah I'm you make that chair look good i think it's a very comfortable chair yeah, i hope we're not intimidating <laughs> you with our i don't know like with I, our yeah. physique. i'm trying to pull my shirt up a little <laughs> i choose this lifestyle so it does take a great amount of time and yeah, i do it's a lot of discipline it. yeah chicken and rice right a lot yeah yeah no yeah. pizza i Beers for like last night, I was telling you, I, I went crazy on a splurge because A, it was leg day, B, my body needed it, C, I wanted to go out to dinner with my family. That's so cool. I saved myself those occasions. It's yeah, not like, nice. hey, you want a slice of pizza? You offer me one. No, I'm good. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm fine. Like one piece here is not worth it, but if I'm eating pizza, I'm sitting in the dark, alone, lights out, candle lit, eating an entire one till I can't move because that's how I do it. I do that every night. That's bad. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't. I don't really. That's I really he don't. just sits in the dark and drinks a beer. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Another Your Tuesday. Drink. <laughs> uh, well, how many how many sets of gear do you do you own? I know you currently. Yeah, I mean, do you people recycle like, them? And I mean, yeah, like, now you got you the know, Roman thing. The, I only have one cape. Okay. Right? So only one new pair in that one. I don't know. Probably twenty or thirty. Yeah. But then there's like people, weird people who go online and try to buy it off you. Nothing right. wrong with that. Yeah, it's not. Right. God I mean, bless I'm not them. using it. But then it goes. How big's your closet? I mean, it's a walk in. <laughs> I wouldn't say it's, it's huge, nice. but it's. My decent. wife has all of them. They're just little man room. panties. I mean, yeah. it's, it's don't take a picture of them. No, I mean, I'm sure you got some things. You got one cape? Well, I need another cape. Well, right now I have Most superheroes have more than one cape. Right. That's what I'm so, and I'm trying to think of like, what's the next cape? cape. Yeah, I do need a backup cape. You're yeah. absolutely right. How many do you travel with? Oh, only one cape. Oh, wow. That's awesome. <laughs> he wears it on. That's awesome. it, it would depend, too, then, like, how many shows am I doing, this and that. Yeah. See, as this uh, the Overman has taken over, like, all my gear is obsolete now, short of the one I have. Oh, okay. So then I'll actually have, you know, another couple pairs that match that cape, but then. I can recycle the gear, the old gear, if sure. I get a cape to match. So if I'm doing like live events or independents or house shows, non-televised events, that's where I can use the recycle gear. So my good gear stays TV Keep it ready. Aside. Yeah, it's cool. Right on. I then yeah. I never knew. These are weird things. Hey, these are things I'm interested in. Yeah, well, it's like you know, a costume. You'd have a you know probably a big deal if you were playing MSG, but if you're playing the Beachland Ballroom, you're probably gonna wear. You know, yeah, whatever. You see yeah. some of the shit I'll this a, guy wears on stage. Yeah, I'll put a different pair of shoes on, probably. Yeah. So, <laughs> fucking Hoka. He'll wear a different pair of Hoka's. khaki shorts. Remember, Hoka. 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 Comfortable shoes. Now, take my tooth. They're cool. <laughs> now, you had concussion problems. Yeah. And how That had to be tough. I had oh, one concussion from football, and I just had to sit in a dark room for days because it yeah. was killed. I can't they're, imagine coming back from... It was darkness. Now, one thing about the WWE is they're very good at, like, clearing you before you get back. They're very cognate of mm-hmm. that. So, yeah, but they're not fun. No. no. They're... Fu- they're... All right. I'm an old-school wrestling fan. It's so comfortable. Yeah. Isn't it? I'm so happy. I'm an old-school guy. I'm happy mm-hmm. you're happy. And I want to know, <laughs> why don't finishers mean anything they anymore? They do. Mine always works. So I can't speak for anybody. Right. But I mean, I'm a pile driver used to end this. A DDT, Jake Roberts, that was the end of it. I'm so glad we're talking about this. I, I hope you didn't. 
Do you understand what we're kind of saying? Oh, yeah, I'm getting it. All right. No, but, like, we, we've we gone the wayside of bastardizing finishes to the point for frivolously cheap reactions where they have to come back and they have to work, and that's why I will not exploit mine. Right. And I get called, like, you boring. He's not working with me. No, I'm just not. No, my thing works. Yeah. If I'm a proficient champion, ass-kicking killer, the best in the world... The things I do, when I do my thing to you, it fucking works. Right. Right? Okay. As it should. Yeah, so I think it's become easy and hive mind and complacent for young people to just think by doing that and exploiting it that it makes for a good match, where it does not. Right. But maybe we're just old men yelling at clouds. But we're not, because here's the thing. Ratings go down. Numbers go down. Right. Interest wanes. Why? Because nothing special, nothing has meaning. If exactly. nothing has meaning, Similar. you might get, yeah, you might get in a moment a reaction, but you're sacrificing the big culmination for minimal reactions. There's a really sexual analogy I would use, but... It's fine. No. Okay. Well, I'm saving for a duh. <laughs> Stay ready to Cleveland after hours. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it involves... Uh, explosions so okay we got what you're saying yeah <laughs> but i yeah i i just I don't get it it's like i get false finishes because that adds so much drama to the, yeah. the story you're telling but you can't i mean if it's predictable it has been i've That's like probably seen, why it's waning in yeah sense. i've seen people who are not like gigantic wrestling fans like we would be but like you'd watch it and you'd get an idea and you could just subconsciously see it and then Somebody hits the thing, and you're going, oh, he's kicking out. Yeah. And he yeah. does. I was like, I told you. Yeah. Oh, here like, comes the end. Yeah. yeah. But it, here it is. Yeah, okay. it's a, like old school. I mean, I, I don't know. I've just, I grew up watching because we've know, al- Gordon Soley and the gang. Yeah, people you know. have allowed it to happen, and I don't think the people in charge have done a good enough job to bring exactly. it back. Yeah. And that's, I don't know. What are we going to do? I'm trying. Maybe we can bring it back in. You but you charge, gotta, you gotta start by leading by example first off, and yeah. then secondly, like hope people will follow. But enough people think this way. The problem is people are afraid to do it because they still care about the immediate reaction they're gonna get here, right? As opposed to the long term payoff. Yeah. So I don't know. Yeah. I like yeah. <laughs> I like to suffer a long time before I get gratified. <laughs> it's well, very easy here dopamine. We are. Mean, Dopamine right, culture, yeah. like, 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 everything's like, 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 but now, nah, man, earning something really feels good. Yeah. Now, I read a story about Ric Flair. <laughs> we mentioned him earlier. Woo. How he, he worked on his working punch by hitting a string, I believe, yeah. until he could, I mean, that's got to be impossible. I, I mean, would hang shower curtains and do it. Really? Yeah. Because some string. people's working punches look amazing. Other We've people. lost them looking good too. People, I yeah, them all oh, shower yeah. curtains. I'll like, be yeah, <laughs> I hate it. Imagine, I don't know, if I'm a wrestler, like, if I hit you, I'm a world champion. If I hit you, you better go down. If or, I hit you, or if I hit you and you go, huh? Then <laughs> right, I suck. I think right. that's what's going to happen later. I don't see because <laughs> I've been known to go. Ugh. Ejaculation. <laughs> what is he do? Yeah. I'll take one if you want. If it's good film. Ejaculation. No, no I'll punch you. in the eye. <laughs> a, lot, a lot of dummies like to get chopped by wrestlers now at cons and well, stuff. You know, oh man, I hate that. Right? God, why? You know. Why? Because they want to. Because they want to see if they can take it. And like, yeah, you can take you, getting a hit really hard in a safe place. Yeah, and it hurts, but then now we're exploiting the fact. Yeah, exactly. If I f- chop so and so for fifty bucks at an autograph signing, and he goes, "Ow!" Oh. Now what? Well, he's fine. Now then, what are you going to do next time you shop somebody in a yeah, match? Yeah, if I chop somebody in a match and they go, "Oh," yeah, yeah. and then they're like, well, oh, "They give you a hundred bucks, you take them down." Good point. I don't see Paul White <laughs> chop a few. Fuckers. I was just at the gym with him, so I was down in Tampa. Yeah, and. Uh, Hard Knock South, like Cena owns it, but like the wrestlers mm-hmm. go there and like Rob's there. He's like, he's a a musical genius, but really? b also like a certified crazy scientist. But yeah, hanging out with Paul is fun. Yeah, Dude, he's cool. Small fella, tiny Captain guy. Insano, tiny guy. <laughs> now speaking, you've wrestled pretty much everybody I can think of. Man. I mean, is there anybody yeah. on your wish list? Cena, Peacemaker. 
Yeah. <laughs> Took him down? Yeah. Maybe. I don't know. Well, he's... Well, yeah. now that this... I'll be in your corner. That'd be great. With some of that bourbon. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's, he's up there. I mean, he's got to be the pinnacle. I mean... Yeah. Now that... I, did, I just want the verbal exchange. Because well, I don't think punk? anybody... Is he what? Is he a punk? No, he's a great no. guy. John Cena, he's, he's got like the record for the most make, make a wish. Yeah, he's... Yeah, but you still want to drop him. I want to... I think he deserves the an equal challenge on the microphone. I don't think anybody's given it to him. I can't tell you the last time someone... He mean, always burns these people alive. And I know the dude, and I've talked to him, and yeah. I know what he does. Not that I'm saying I'm going to throttle him, but like I know he tries to challenge that person, but every person is young and afraid and cowers to his insanely great ability to communicate. Whereas... Yeah. And, and it's intimidation. Yeah. And he can be rabid everybody because he knows what they would say to him. Right. So you're going to say this... He's this, already ready. Yeah. Oh, he's he's amazing, dude. I mean, he's oh, he's so clever. Even when he was used to back when he was, you know, thugonomics, when he do the flea fro flea f- style Say rapping, the free, yeah, the, 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 he, the wrote, rapping. he wrote them all. Too. I know it's crazy, I mean, dude. I was hanging Let's out with him. It. You want me to call him? <laughs> no, please don't. Don't tell him you know me. That'll ruin me. <laughs> we were hanging out at his uh, because of me. Yeah, we we're hanging out at his his giant mansion, <laughs> drinking wine, bourbon a little bit. Nice. Almost as and nice then, as this place, I yeah, imagine. Almost. No, it, Close. They're both homes. <laughs> then I, I, I started going. Didn't miss a beat. Ruined everybody. Really? In like fucking 45 seconds. Wow. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm wondering how long. He, I mean, he's probably going to be gone pretty soon because the, the after strike's almost over. Yeah. So, But God bless him coming back and giving time. Yeah. You know? Because he's helping, I mean, look what he's doing in LA. LA. Yeah. You know? LA's finally a guy that could probably yeah, take that trash talking to. I mean, sounds good to me, but yeah, he's oh, wow. up there. I hear you there, brother. <laughs> no, he's great too. Let me ask you, you know, we'll start wrapping this up soon. Who would be on your Mount Rushmore mm. of wrestlers? Are we going eras or just in general? In general. Such, oh, they, you've... I know it sucks because I've been oh, thinking hey, about it. Orton's another guy too. Randy, you, yeah, or Bob, and <laughs> both. Okay. If I'm going uh, the Mount Rushmore, I mean, it's like the foundation. Like, how can, you can't leave Andre off, right? Really? Okay. But you, you could, but then it doesn't seem right. And then you can't leave Hulk off. You could, you, but you could. <laughs> you can't leave Flair Brother. off. But you could. But then you could. where the hell do I put Austin? And then where do I put The Rock? Where do you put John? John's had a reign that's, yeah. in hindsight, pretty much on that level. Probably on that level. Is See, on I'm, that level. I'm looking at guys like Henning. I'm looking at Macho. Are you talking about then proficiency in the ring? Whatever you prefer to put it's on such that. such a loaded Would question. I know, that's there? what it is. No. Yeah, no. You got the belt. No, but Macho Man was way better than me. Macho, right? yeah, Macho he snapped Man. into a slim gym. He I know did. That he much. snapped into a lot. But like, God no, like he you watch his. Uh, I don't know who would you put in your Mount Rushmore of uh, rock acts. Oh boy, here rock we go. acts. Yeah, here we go. The Who, Prince, Kiss, and Faith No More. I don't know about Faith No More. But yeah, you cry. That's a that. wild card, but I get it. Uh, yeah, those are some of my favorites. But he, he it's, it's uh, cheap uh, trick would be up there too. Oh really? Uh, On the Mount. It's a question that is personally just personal. Sure. Yeah. So if it's personal for me, yeah, that's what right. it's about, bro. You don't have Flair, to say Hulk, mm-hmm. Austin, John. Okay. What about you? Who would I put there? Yeah. <laughs> do you know four wrestlers? <laughs> yeah, I do. Okay, go ahead. What did you say? <laughs> Flair, uh, Hulk, Steve Austin, and I Cena. Agree. Good. But that's me personally. See, mine. No, but I would, I would probably because those are people I know. Yeah, these would, would be mine. Okay. Oh, here we go. And, and again, it's not over popularity because popular it's doesn't who, mean it's who you good think should me. be there. The right. one reason you can almost leave Stone Cold off, even though he had the best run ever, mm-hmm. was that it was only two years. A couple of years. Which, well, same with The Rock. I mean, Rock was only around for a couple of years. Yeah. Okay. So I got Kurt Henning. Mm-hmm. Macho Man. Yep. Uh, Kurt Henning never was a world champion. He didn't, he didn't have to be. He was Mr. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> he was. Then I would go, Sean's got to be up there. Sean. Oh, my God. I can't believe it. Amazing. Yeah. Um, 
Come on, Jericho. Scott. Jericho's got to be up there for me, too. Oh, he's yeah, had such wow. a sustained he's, amount of success. He's my age, and he's still doing it. Yeah, and he's able to always reinvent himself, which I think a lot of He's people. done it so many times. And then, times. like, I just totally negate saying The Undertaker, who's way Oh, up yeah, how can, yeah, I got, how that, can you believe that? Now that hurts. Yeah. Uh, it's see, a loaded it's, question, man. It is, and, and it's, it was meant to be. But it'll yeah. change tomorrow. I mean, it will. It's it's like, that's cool. how when we do our top fives. We do top fives, yeah. And it's like, you've got top... You got five guys or five bands or whatever that you think are the best, and then the next day you go, oh, fuck, "What was I thinking? What yeah. about this guy?" I left off the shitty Beatles. <laughs> Not the Beatles. That's no, the band, the shitty the Beatles. The shitty Beatles. <laughs> How were they? The shitty. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Wayne's World joke. <laughs> All right. Before we wrap up, let Cleveland. Yeah, NWA. Sal Win. Sal Win. Ten twenty eight. 1028. Whatever you do, don't go see them in concert. Come see me defend the world. Have you yeah, yeah she, we play every weekend. He's only here in Cleveland every... Well, I live here, but I only defend well, I mean, the title once. defending your title. You don't do yeah, that I'm on a, a weekly basis. We come to the, where are you going? To the Hooli House the day before? The Hooli House on the 27th and the 28th. Is it downtown? Where are we at, Matt? Matt doesn't know. Is that downtown? Uh, Hooli House? Yeah. No, it's in Menor. Oh, even better. That's yeah, it's right down the street from you. Dude, I'll bring... Yeah, I'll bring a Come on, pile of tickets. EC3 will be there. Come get buy some sell, tickets for Sammy. I think we can sell them for 20 bucks. What's it called? Salwin, I the name's uh, unpronounceable. It, it's Irish. Forget it. William Patrick really was dead set on it. It has some sort of Halloween ties. It's about ancient spirits. Yeah, he like I can tend to over be overly over creative, right? Yeah. Well, the one thing about I wanted to mention, mm-hmm. Cleveland does have a long history of great wrestlers coming out of this town. It does we do not just including, you know, the best oh. one. Uh, the Miz is from Cleveland. This is from Cleveland. From Parma, I think. Johnny Gargano. Yep. From Cleveland, Dolph, Dolph Ziggler. Ziggler, who would be great in NWA, Let's challenging for the title. I'd love to have him. Now that he's free. Got, uh, uh, Dana Brooks from Cleveland. She is. Uh, Ryan Nemeth from Cleveland. Yep. Ray Rowe, a.k.a. Uh, yeah. Eric, one of the war veterans. Yep, Eric. Yep, he was a bodyguard, or he was a bouncer at Peabody's, I think. He was. Oh. Uh, and he got in the ring. Yeah. Threw Wardlow. Dude, Wardlow rules. Wardlow. Yeah, got to do better with him, though. Dude, he's dude, awesome. He's such a good dude. You're right. And yeah. Matt Cross. Yeah. What the hell he was? JT Lightning was from Cleveland. Yes, he was. So we got a lot of talent in this town. Like, from this town. There's a wild card we're missing, too. I can't remember. There's some. I mean, we probably missed quite a few, but. Yeah. I mean. It's a good list. Yeah. I mean, have you ever wrestled for AIW? Yeah. Have you? Okay. It started with them. Oh, right on. They started, yeah. Yeah. Go see them once in a while, too. But. October 28th, down at the Temple Live. At the Temple Live. Where is that exactly? It's on Euclid and I think Prospect-ish. It's a nice nice venue. Yeah, it's super cool. We're in the the big ballroom. Uh, Well, hopefully the max capacity. capacity. I don't know, 750? All right, we'll get them in there. Let's get get everyone down there. NWATix.com. That's N-W-A-T-I-X.com. And I'll come to the Hooli House with a handful. Awesome, bro. Come out to the Hooli House. Uh, EC3, we appreciate you being I'm here. I'm sure I can get a lot of single moms to come if I pop Please. my shirt off. Please, right? he, he's yeah. looking. Ladies, I don't, he's single. Only uh, one, though. because you I, could just see him. <laughs> you need room in the womb for my prodigy. If you could see him sitting in this chair. <laughs> I'm really comfortable. <laughs> I should have better posture right now. It's going to be <laughs> ECZs here in a few minutes if we don't get him up out of this chair. we got to get him out. Yeah, I got some oatmeal to eat. He's got some fake oatmeal to eat. <laughs> So we want to thank you for coming down and hanging thank out with you. us, my, my brother. Thank you so we much. appreciate you, brother. Yeah, thank you, cool. Brother. I like appreciate the, it. I hope I like it didn't hurt cha- your hand when I shook it. No. Oh yeah. <laughs> All like, right. Yeah. I like, to, I like to chop it up with people that are not necessarily involved in wrestling. Wow. Well, I think some yeah. conversations yeah. are really. And fun. I'm completely not. So yeah, it's and it was cool. We had a good. Company. I'm a casual <laughs> fan. But for Stairway to Cleveland, that's Keith. That's Scott. We'll see you next time. Hey, if you like this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, share it with your friends. And don't forget to follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Show us your tweets.